What do you think's on the other side of that tunnel? I think people can tell when you're having fun and people can tell when you're being honest. I'll never forget that my first New Yorker gig with Jordan Awan, when he emailed me with a brief, he attached some images of pieces of mine that he liked that he wanted me to reference. One of the pieces that he'd pulled from my Tumblr was not something that I had on my portfolio website. It was a piece for a zine that my friend put together. It's called Ahoy Booty. And I would have never shown it to a New York art director in a million years, but he had come across it and saw that it was a fun drawing that showed more about my sense of humor and style than any of my like uh, college professional portfolio pieces uh -huh. did. And that wound up being kind of the direction that I moved in more over the next couple of years. Very cartoony, lots of like really small fiddly details, but totally fantastical perspective, like isometric, not realistic in any way. Something that I really admire about your work, there's the honesty, but also there's a, a vulnerability that comes with that, especially as you do more autobio comics. I have this very clear memory of waking up really early and I'm freezing in the breakfast nook, but also crying because oh, it, you Mike. did this such a beautiful story. Thank you. Like, I, I have goosebumps now <laughs> thinking about it. it. There's this moment where you break the fourth wall and you actually talk to your reader. The scary part for me when I sort of try to do anything in the auto-bio realm is, am I going to offend anybody I love? For stories where I think it might be kind of sensitive, I check with them beforehand. Mm -hmm. I'll send them a script or I'll send them pencils and just get their approval. I've reached a point where I've kind of gone through the other side, where I do a comic that's straight up autobiographical and people read it mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, this character is really interesting. How did you come up with her? And I'm like, it's literally me, and this is literally a story from my life. I didn't develop this story or like brainstorm this character at all, but it does give me a kind of shield where I no longer have to worry about the vulnerability or the confessional aspect because people will read it and not necessarily know that it's about me. kind of trees these are? Cypress. They're beautiful. They're my favorite. This is the time on the show when we don our painting hats. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I think I can get one of these things. We look like proper artists. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll be right here if uh -huh. you need anything. You might very well be in my painting.
Nobody saw that. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Trying to get a closer look. Hey, Mike. Yes? Can I draw you in my painting falling over? Yes. <sighs> you have Thanks. my you have my permission, Sophia. Thank you for asking. Now you're teaching, mm -hmm. and do you feel like to be able to teach you, you yourself have to have arrived at some sort of comfort level, or? I think it's a, maybe that's like the cart before the horse. What's actually happening is that having to articulate my approach to my students is making me actually take a stand with a bunch of different things I've been experimenting with. But then you go home and you feel all the same insecurities or doubts about where you're at stylistically now, even, even yeah. though the work itself looks very confident. There's a very strong voice there, but... It's not that you become less insecure, but you become more secure with your insecurities or comfortable with feeling that living and working with insecurities doesn't invalidate you as an artist, but it is a necessary part of your creative yeah. development. And there's something about focusing and narrowing your your style that could feel like a like you're sacrificing opportunity. But I feel, on the contrary, like focusing has just opened up my world so much more because it's building a stronger identity for myself and taking a firmer stance on the things that I think are actually valuable. Mm -hmm. You're never gonna be able to please everyone. You're never gonna be able to do work that could run in any magazine. Like, you're always going to have your niche, and that's not a bad thing. It's not limiting. Oh, God, so good. You're Do you see awesome. you? Yes. <laughs> you're on the sofa. Sophia, I, yeah. sofa? <laughs> Got the shadows and everything. It's so good. <sighs> I wanted to frame it I like a pastoral scene. I also love that there's scene. no, there's no painting supplies. Yeah, I just, like I just, just fell <laughs> out of this, maybe out of this tree. Maybe it's a mic tree, and Probably. you ripened and mm -hmm. fell to the earth. <laughs> Felt I ripened. I ripened and fell to earth. <laughs> Story of your life. That's it. <laughs>